podcaster Joe Rogan gave his take on the impending arrest of Donald Trump in last Wednesday's episode of the Joe Rogan Experience. Here he is chatting about it with MMA fighter and Trump supporter Jorge Masvidal. Let's watch. They're talking about arresting him for paying a girl to stop talking about them having sex. I thought that was a good deal. I thought it's a good deal. You pay someone. Didn't Clinton do that? Didn't John, John Edwards got in trouble for doing that, but he didn't go to jail. The one dude that's fighting for us, that's actually for the people, they want to crucify him. But they just don't want him president again. And they know that if he runs against Biden, Biden is so old. And television host Bill Maher also weighed in this weekend on the same question. He said arresting the former president would be a huge mistake. I really don't want to give Donald Trump the satisfaction of talking about him. I thought when he was gone, he'd be gone a little bit. But, you know, there is an ex-president out there now who's going to be arrested, possibly. And he is talking about violence in the streets of his supporters if he does. So, I don't know. I kind of have to say or get your opinion on, on this just one more time. We can be quick about it. But I just would like to go on record of uh, saying I think this is a colossal mistake if they bring these charges. Um, not this one. You know, I mean, yes, he's done a lot of bad things, and I'm sure he did this. Everything they accuse him of done, he did. But first of all, it's not going to work. It's going to be rocket fuel for his 2024 campaign. And it's just going to look to MAGA Nation like, oh, you know, you tried with Mueller. You tried with Ukraine. You tried with January 6th. Now we go to the porn star. Really? You're down to that? Yeah, I mean, I, Bill Maher is uh, speaking for a whole lot of people, uh, I think even on the Democratic side of the aisle, uh, who are particularly w worried about the, the logic of this case in particular, which has a lot of issues. There might be other uh, potentially stronger charges against Donald Trump relating to Georgia, uh, coming down the pipeline. This is, yeah, it's, it's in involving a payment to Stormy Daniels facilitated by Michael Cohen. There's a question of whether Donald Trump knew about it. There's a question of whether it violates campaign finance law. There's a question of uh, the statute of limitations. There's all these kind of confounding details. To Joe Rogan's point, yes, as, as, now the, the Clinton payments, I think, were, was a result of a settlement mm. uh, of a legal action. But, and then the John Edwards thing, he was prosecuted, uh, but he was acquitted by a jury. But I, I can see how you would say that there's kind of a similar principle here involved. And like he, it, was a, it was a contractual arrangement. Here's some money to stop talking about this. The, the confounding factor in the, the Trump part of it is like, well, maybe it was a campaign contribution. Yes. There's laws around that. But what counts as a campaign contribution well, it was is a, a look, little bit It was an nebulous. election law violation. The, the yeah. parallel that I think is most apt is the one that I think Russell Brand made last week and that we talked about between uh, J uh, Donald Trump's inappropriate use of campaign funds here and the inappropriate use of campaign funds by Hillary Clinton to pursue the Steele mm -hmm. dossier, for which she had to pay an $8,000 fine and the DNC had to pay, I think, a $150,000 fine or something yeah. like that, maybe lo low 100 figure fine. A reflection that she shouldn't have done it. It technically violates some law, but right. it's not the biggest deal in the world, and this but, is kind of similar. <laughs> but there's, there's this conflation that's going on here, which I find to be rather distasteful as a progressive who's, you know, frankly, supportive of sex work, that... that it seems like liberals are trying to embarrass Donald Trump and his choice to sleep with Stormy Daniels doing this weird kind of like a, a toxicity by a, a prox a association to a kind of an unsavory figure. And in doing so, I think betraying some liberal ideals in the process. I mean, the, the point is an ooh, LOL, Donald Trump slept with Stormy Daniels and indicting Stormy Daniels in the process. Right. The point is it was a campaign finance violation. The illegal aspect of this is the campaign finance di di uh, violation, not sleeping with someone, not having an affair, not all of these kind of like weird moral crimes that people mm -hmm. are trying to legislate in the court of public opinion. If it's a campaign finance violation and that's what's against the law, then you have to compare it to what Hillary Clinton did and make a decision about whether or not there, people are treating these situations the same way. How did we frame the idea, the chance of lock her up when it was Hillary Clinton that was under the um, microscope a few years ago. You know, and did we see that as anti-democratic? Did we see that as a kind of an authoritarian impulse to lock up political actors that you don't agree with? Yes, that's what the liberals thought at the time. And I just can't get past the hypocrisy of this, especially when, as you pointed out, there are much more substantive crimes that Donald Trump has been accused of. The, the strategic question of why this New York case is going ahead before the Georgia case I don't know if it's just a goof. I don't know if it's uh, New York DAs trying to make a name for themselves, having been under pressure 
for not being tough enough on crime or trying to deflect from not being ha- having progressive support them or having tough on crime people support yeah. them because they're they're kind of charting this middle ground and thinking this is a slam dunk for them. But whatever it is, it seems to be really undermining a national agree, strategy to undermine the, pre- that, the former president. Ten thousand percent. I agree with everything you just said. Uh, then they, the question becomes, uh, does this to to Bill Maher's point, um, is this going to help Trump in it? You know, I, I don't obviously not in the general, but is this giving more, uh, more, putting more force, more energy behind his attempts to win the nomination again. Um, there was uh, some reporting. I think there was a piece in, I believe it was Politico over the weekend about uh, Ron DeSantis maybe stalling a little bit, uh, losing some momentum. There's a perception, I think, even among people who are rooting for DeSantis, that how he handled this was not correct, that mm-hmm. he should have been more defiantly. We will absolutely, we would never, you know, set, we wouldn't co- uh, cooperate with what the uh, the Manhattan DA is doing. We wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't send Trump, you know, we wouldn't <laughs> grab him, put him on a plane and, and send him to New York if it came to, the, to that, uh, that he was a bit more dismissive of it and uh, and referenced the hush money payment mm-hmm. to porn star mm-hmm. uh, several times uh, and th- 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 that wasn't good enough um, there's a uh, now I, I don't know that that that's correct this was politico's framing of it i think there's a lot of people in the mainstream media who obviously lust for trump to be the nominee again because uh, for a lot of news websites journalistic outlets not our show, but others. The the, the <laughs> audience, the, what what remains of the audience, craves Trump related content, mm-hmm. craves uh, resistance porn, mm-hmm. and wants him to be the nominee because it will be, it'll be good for their ratings or be mm-hmm. better for their ratings. They're they're lost without him. You know, kill you. What would I do without you? The Joker yeah. Batman dynamic. Yeah. Uh, so so th- so they don't want DeSantis. So so they would so they're going to cast his chance to get this nomination as, as, as the whole way through as uh, as less likely than it probably is, in my view. But that yeah. does not mean it's necessarily wrong. And I, I've never, I think I'm, I've known for, or I, I'm coming off as like, as very um, high on DeSantis's chances. I want to be clear. I think DeSantis can defeat Trump for the nomination. I do not think it will be easy. Mm-hmm. I don't think it will be a sure thing. I think it will be a brutal battle to the end. You think anything's possible? I really do think not having seen the two of them on a debate stage together is a big what mm-hmm. if. I, I think that so many people have failed to overcome Donald Trump from the Republican Party that my odds, if I, if I were a betting woman, I would, I would bet on I would just have to bet on Trump because mm-hmm. that's what history has, has told us. There was a new poll out, uh, however, yesterday uh, 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 about what the head-to-head would look like between DeSantis and Trump in Iowa, in which DeSantis is actually uh, ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of the polls that I've seen so far do have Trump still squarely ahead of DeSantis. But in this poll, 45 percent of Iowa respondents said they would vote for DeSantis, over 37 percent who said they'd cast their vote for Trump. And that's an interesting reversal uh, mm-hmm. of trends that we've seen so far that does make me put an eyebrow up. But again, how they continue to handle all of these issues is a, is a black box. And whether or not Trump, in general, there's a lot of sympathy, if he is in fact arrested, is a, is a big unknown. I do, I mean, I observe that a lot of folks who are kind of over electoral politics on the left and aren't that interested in um, uh, Marion Williamson's campaign, when The View started to go after Marion Williamson, were suddenly very angry and tweeting, well, I'm going to just like um, passive aggressively support her campaign or throw her a few bucks because we don't like the framing of this. It's so unfair. Well, why are you coming after the left in this way? It forced an identity of interest between these leftists and Marion Williamson, even if they didn't organically feel that. And I am, I do wonder whether or not an arrest of Trump, especially for what feels like a trumped up charge, mm-hmm. will have the same result on the right. Yeah, this is kind of like the uh, the the Stormy Daniels payment thing is a little bit like the Mar-a-Lago raids yeah. stuff to me. We're like, okay, there's a, sure, there was some potential wrongdoing here, but again, it's wrongdoings other people have done. Uh, it, 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 right, it feels like they're out to get him. That's certainly what Republican voters think about the deep state and the federal bureaucracy and law enforcement in general. So, you know, if, if you, again, I've said this many times, if you aim for the king, you better not miss. <laughs> and these seem like perilous uh, uh, legal actions that could, that very, have high likelihood of failing and will certainly backfire. Yeah, and there wasn't even a perp walk in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what several people said that to put his mugshot on a t-shirt, it'll fund his entire campaign. Oh. <laughs> More rising right after this. 